Hi guys, welcome to this module on Microsoft Excel. In this session, I want to talk about how you can use the data table feature in Microsoft Excel. So the data table feature is part of what if analysis and it's under the data tab. And on the right there, you've got the three what if analysis features, scenario manager, goal seek, and this one, data table. So what I want the data table to tell me is in this first example, I've got some figures at the top, a little formula at the top. So £220,000 break-even figure. Entrance fee to this feature, so let's say this is a castle, is £9. And the average shop spend is £5. The formula in the yellow cell there is just basically, I'll cancel that one off, I'll click on it for you. It's just... Dividing the top figure by the other two added together, giving you the number of customers that you need. So in this case, 15,714. What you want data tables to tell you is how many customers would you need if you put the price up, the entrance fee. So at the moment, it's at nine pound. When I run this, what's gonna happen is all these figures, 10, 11, 12, etc., are gonna swap places with that nine pound, which is then obviously gonna make this reduce and the reduced figure is going to be placed next to each of these figures. Now to set this up, as you can see in these comment boxes, the top left hand cell has to be blank. But crucially, the top right hand cell has to have a formula in it that links these two cells together, otherwise it won't work. So that says simply equals D5. And then the process is you highlight the whole table, go across to what if analysis and data table and this box comes up that asks you two things row input cell column input cell well our data is not laid out in a row it's laid out in a column so we ignore the top one click on the second box and i've got this color coded so basically green cells go to green so this is the cell that i want these figures to change with so that is the column input cell and then i click ok and then the figures are dropped in next to it now, if you change these figures on the left, it will recalculate on the right. But you can't or shouldn't change these figures on the right because it's part of an array formula. As you can see there, you've got the array brackets. So the ones on the left you can change, but not the ones on the right. So that was a column input example. The next one is a row input example. So we've got the average shop sales. What will the impact be on these figures on this figure if they spend more than five pound on average so again the top left hand cell is blank and the other cell underneath it has the formula in this case saying equals b6 b6 is this sum here and you highlight a whole table you go to what if data tables now you do have a row input cell and again it is color coded so the row input cell is this cell no column so just click ok to that and then the figures drop in and once again once you've done that you can change these figures out on the outside and it will recalculate underneath putting them both together doing the column and the row you don't have a blank cell on the top left hand corner but you must have this cell with the formula in it so this says equals b5 which is equal in the sum there it's working out how many customers you need how many visitors so you highlight the whole table again go to what if analysis data table now you do have a row input which is a green so green to green that's the average shop spend and then purple to purple is the entrance fee click ok and then all the figures drop in so if the average spend was eight pound and you charge £15 to get in, if you could get away with that price, you only need 9,565 customers as opposed to 15,000 plus there. So it's a great little tool to work out what you should price things at. If you had historical data and you knew what your average visitors was, you could work that out. Now one last example, investment. So I've got conditional formatting on this one. So basically, you've invested £100,000 
and you're making these boxes one box costs five pound to make you want to know how many boxes at five pound for example do you need to make to get your money back so you can see the red is hundred thousand there going green at twenty four thousand boxes and or if you charge six pound per box or it costs you six pound which you don't want it you want it to be five pound it could be less you could actually charge less i could put these figures down in fact i will do that actually so if i go four three two one so really you are making a lot of boxes to break even if you only charge one pound per box so let's recreate this one from scratch so i'll just copy these titles just drag them down a bit use my control key to copy those so we had a hundred thousand pounds one pound one box five pound per box and then the sum is just equals the quantity times the price and then the table let's color this in yellow color that one in yellow these two cells need to be equal in each other so equals that tick and then you're just doing your criteria or your quantities across the top or you don't have to do them across the top it's totally up to you um, like so I won't go as far this time I'll go up in price six eight ten you highlight the table you go to what if data table your row input cell is the quantities I haven't got it color coded but that's it your column is your price which is that and then it should fill it in so you still you need to make you're not breaking even there 60,000 so 6,000 boxes would only get you 60,000 pounds at 10 pound a box so you need to make more than that so that's how you can use data tables um, there's two columns there's a row there is a column input so that's all i want to talk about in this little session so hopefully you found that useful and i'll see you in the next one thank you for your time